Hey guys, no life 4 here. Welcome to the very first Slice of Development live stream. We're going to have a lot of fun today. There's going to be several new announcements, some great updates, and the first ever footage of BBT. We are going to start with a, a brief explanation of BBT, summing it up for the people who have either never heard of the game, who are new here, people who have heard of the game but don't, don't know too much about it, or for the people who have been here to give an update on what has changed. Uh, then we're going to go on to meet the devs, so you guys will be able to meet a bunch of the developers on the game. They've all set up a bunch of little videos or little clips of themselves, and I know a lot of them are very excited to be on this stream, so give them a lot of love. Then we're going to be moving on to the combat showcase of BBT, which will be a nice little clip of BBT showing a bit of gameplay, but just remember it's very, very early. The gameplay you are seeing, all the scripts were written in the past about two weeks, so it is early. Uh, then we're going to do a recap of the Slice Collection. So we're going to start with the trailer, then we're going to move on to explaining what it is, talking about each of the levels, and doing a nice fly-through of each of the levels. Um, then we're going to go on to a rundown of each individual chapter that is currently planned out for the game, and all the levels within those chapters. Uh, then a quick interview. Uh, it might not be quick. I'll we'll have to see what it's edited down to. Uh, of me asking how it is to work on such a game, how I got where I am, and a lot of questions about BBT will be answered. Uh, and then we'll move on to a development live stream where everybody will move on over to me live, not pre-recorded, which I am right now. And you guys will see me working on the game, and a lot of give, you will be allowed to give your input, and we're all just going to have a fun time. Uh, don't forget to donate to the Rehydrated Relief while you're here. And, yeah. But first... World Premiere. Would you stop that? I'm sorry, I just thought it would make your announcements more dramatic and exciting. It doesn't, it just gets really annoying. Anyways, here's the announcement. Our journey begins. Epic, heroic, daring, valiant, courageous! The sponge. The laughter. Now be absorbed with the mellowest and the most macho graphics you'll ever see. Oh, breathtakingly evil! The SpongeBob SquarePants movie game. Be absorbed. All rights reserved to the respectful owners. Nickelodeon's SpongeBob SquarePants does not belong to Slice Interactive or Trilogy Team. You heard it here first, folks. Slice is working to bring you the 2004 classic with brand new graphics, reimagined mechanics, and streamlined gameplay. Okay, let me explain. The game has completely original levels. The, the levels will take place in either past worlds or brand new ones. There are no bus stops. There is always two people in play at one time. Uh, the second player is either controlled by an AI or another person. The whole game takes place inside of a book. There are three different enemy types. One are enemies from whichever game 
the world you're playing in is based on. So like if you're playing in Jellyfish Fields based on BFDB, you'll have a fodder, a hammer, and a tartar. Uh, then you all, your second enemy type are brand new robots, like the Wattbot, which are featured in every single world. And then the third is the Inked, which are the, the most interesting enemy. They take pieces from broken robots, so like when you when you destroy a robot, it leaves pieces around. And they grab those pieces and they pull them together into new combinations. So you can get one enemy with like a fodder head, a hammer R, a watt bot body, stuff like that. And uh, they're kind of beat up because you, you already broke the robots down. Uh, if you want more info, you can go and watch this, the, uh, this stream from the first Rehydrated release. It's on my channel. It has a lot of info about all this. Combat in BBT is very different from any of the other Spongebob games. Um, you have three, three main moves, kind of like BFBB, but you can combine them. So if you do like an upward launch with a spin, you'll get an upward spin. So you won't just move up or spin you'll spin while moving up. Um, or if you do like a bash and a spin, you'll spin while bashing and you'll turn into a drill. So you only really have to remember your three main attacks and you can combine them to get different effects. Um, there's also an upgrade system, similar to the movie game, but uh, a lot more complex. So, it's very customizable. Anybody who wants, like let's say that you want your smash to do a uh, knockback in a larger radius rather than damage, you can do that. Just don't put upgrades into your damage, put it into like shockwave and uh, knockback. Uh, you also have a shield, so you have health points like in BFPB, like your underwear, but you also have a shield. Your, your shield is raised by collecting ink globs, which is also the main currency, kind of like shiny objects. And when you when you take damage, you'll lose some of your shield. And you won't take lose any health points unless your shield hits zero. The game is a mixture of linear and open world. So like BFDB, you have a hub world with different levels you can go to if you have a certain amount of pages. But, um, that only for the levels in said chapter. When you go from chapter 1 to chapter 2, you cannot go back to chapter 1. Everything moves over, so you want to make sure that you have everything that you want from chapter 1 before you move on to chapter 2. But that's a, a good rundown of BBT. Let's move on to the next section. Hey guys, my name is Hiro and I mainly work as a 3D artist for BBT. I did a lot of the smaller objects like plants, platforms and other decoration objects. Some of my more major recent works would be the fodder and hammer redesign that you'll see sometime today. I also do some level designing but it's comparably minor. About me, I've been on this team way back before slides was even a thing in early 2018 when BFPB HD was still going. A lot has happened since then, both positively and negatively, but I'm still very engaged and hope that I, and we as Slice as a whole, can deliver you a true successor to BFBB. I'm looking forward to your all's reactions on Slice Collection and hope that we'll be able to smoothly transition to making chapter 1. Huge thanks again to Riders DX and the rest of the organizers for having us here once again. It really means a lot to me. Hello! My name is Larry, I go by Zephyr on Discord. I'm a character and environmental rigger at Slice Interactive. Starting from late 2018 to present, I was responsible for rigging and white painting a handful of models, ranging from trees to a glob creature and even the square yellow guy himself, SpongeBob SquarePants. Hello, my name is Gerald. I am the lead project manager of the movie game remake, and I am a part of Slice. What's up, peeps? My name is Sloth Dude. Um, what I do for the game is uh, I, 
I just do, I basically do texture art. That's all I do. I mean, not all I do. I do, uh, do, I do modeling. I do texture art. I do some promo art. Uh, I'm mainly just an art type person for the game. I don't do anything technical like, you know, programming. Yeah, it's, it's mainly what I do. It's, I just, I, all the textures that you see in this game are mainly made by me. Um, I also did some of the models you've seen. So that's basically what I do for the team. It's pretty fun. I, I really love doing this stuff. See, I, I, I have so much creativity in my mind. I love to do all kinds of stuff and there is all kinds of pe talented people on this team i could tell you that um but yeah i i'm really thankful to be on this team i hope you guys enjoy this uh stream so far um anyway yeah hello i'm spencer also known as Nyboss or nye for short and I'm a concept artist and 3D modeler for Slice Interactive. Whilst I haven't made any assets I can explicitly say yet, I'm really happy to have this opportunity to work with all of the talented people here at Slice, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we are able to create together in the foreseeable future. <coughs> I live in constant pain. Uh, I am Double Shrek. Um, my friends call me Double. Just kidding. Don't have any friends. Um, I am a general and concept artist for uh, Slice Interactive. Um, I, uh, I've made like at least one thing, I think. And um, yeah, that, that went pretty well, I guess. So, um, I mean, hey, I'm working on other things. I just, my dumbass just doesn't finish them. Um, I can't think of anything to say. Be whack, smoke some crack, and um, that's, yes, that is all you are getting from me. Hello, my name is Seth Matters 15 also known as Seth, and also as Seth. I am a part of Slice as a concept slash promotional artist and 2D animator, and my main focus right now is the SpongeBob SquarePants movie Reabsorbed. And I also helped editing the trailer and did some voice acting in it too. The game's most recent cover was sketched by me and finished by Sloth Dude. So far, I liked my stay on the team. I have a lot of fun. It's been a fun ride. And I hope y'all are enjoying the stream so far. So now, back to the content that had way more effort into it than what I could make in this amount of time. Uh, I don't even know where to start with you. I mean, do you even know who you're talking to? Do you have any idea who I am? You see this model? Yeah, I made it. What about this animation? Made it as well. What about the Rita Pope? I also made that. You're listening? Okay. Grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, I sit in my room. Basically, I'm kind of a big deal. If you sat in this chair for this long, you'd be dead. Alright, uh, guys, I'm gonna head out now. I don't want to get back to my chair. Alright, see ya. Oh, hello there. I'm Instagrafting one of the programmers from Slice Interactive. <clears throat> All I do in Slice is programming. But I'm actually learning to use Blender and 3D modeling too. To help more in the development of bikini bottom tails. So um, this is the first time I I read my voice. Well, speaking in English. I prefer being anonymous because I don't know if this happens to someone else. I get very nervous when I speak in another language with someone else. But if you're seeing this, that means that I managed to not get nervous so this is all I have to tell you so see you later 
Before we get into the combat showcase of BBT, I'd like to make another announcement. For those of you who don't know, SpongeBob Town was an MMO developed in and around 2012, and can be comparable to many browser-based MMOs of its time. It unfortunately closed its doors after a couple private betas, but it sparked the imagination and curiosity of many people which has led to this recreation from the ground up. Our recreation, dubbed Spongebob Town Rebuilt, aims to complete the unfinished game by using footage, screenshots, and concept art, with our own custom app assets that resemble the source. We also aim to add new content such as new cosmetics, locations, furniture, and more. We hope this project interests you, and hopefully, by the next slice segment, we shall have some gameplay for, for all of you.
BBT Slice Collection isn't just a demo. It acts as both um, your guys' first time playing the game, a prelude to BBT, and a great learning experience for our team. Every single level is made by a different member of the team. Uh, this is a way for us to teach everybody how to make levels, and for us to see what you guys like. So when we release Slice Collection, we expect you guys to give us a lot of input on how the game feels, what you'd want to see out of the game, what you already like about the game, and everything. It's a very good way for us to show you what BBT is going to be like, while also being able to change anything that you guys need us to before we start to work on the actual game. Slice Collection has Spongebob and Patrick following a mysterious trail of ink into jellyfish fields. As they go through jellyfish fields, they find that everything is covered in ink. As they go through, it gets worse and worse and worse. Uh... And I can't say too much more than that without spoiling, so you guys will just have to wait and see. This is a work-in-progress version of Bikini Bottom Tales. Everything here is subject to change. Time for a wonderful day of jellyfishing! I'm ready! Holy Neptune! My shoe's untied! Tie in my shoe, tie in my shoe. Ah, that's better. Huh? I don't remember painting in here. Holy fish paste! Gary, did you do that? Meow! Plankton's robot! Didn't we get rid of you guys, like, 16 years ago? Something strange is going on around here. And I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. As long as there aren't any... ...spooky monsters... <laughs> I don't really do good with spooky monsters.
Now for a chapter breakdown of BBT. Slice Collection opens with SpongeBob's house, which is the hub world. Uh, then you're in uh, Jellyfish Flashback, which is pretty much JF01 from the FPB, but then once you get through, it opens up into a huge expansive level. Then you're on uh, Battle for Bikini Island, which is a level inspired by the box art of BFBB. Then you get to Jellyfish Lagoon, which is a bunch of islands suspended in a large ocean of goo. Uh, then you're then you then we move on to Jellyfish Islands, which is a level to show off the expansive openness of uh, of BBT. It should probably it will probably be the largest level in Slice Collection. Then we move on to Tube Tree Canyon, which is halfway outside, halfway cave level. The cave level is uh, dark and a little spooky, and that's also where the ink will first show up. Then you have Ink Drop Grotto, which is uh, a level that has that it shows how the ink is affecting jellyfish fields. Then you have industrial fields, which is um, the last level showing off the ending state of jellyfish fields covered in the ink. It's, it's the worst that it gets. And then you move on to the final level and boss level, not even Squidward's house. After that, we've got chapter one, which opens with Jellyfish Fields from Battle for Bikini Bottom. Then, Miss Puff's Boating School as a challenge level. Then we can move on to I'm Ready Depression from the movie game, which is based off of the I'm Ready Depression from the, the movie game Reabsorbed that our team is working on. So if you play that one, it'd be nice. Uh, you'll, you'll notice some similarities between them. Uh, then we move on to Krusty Towers, and then to Industrial Park, which has an inked Patrick Boss. Chapter 2 is called Something Lurks. It's uh, a spooky-esque level, it's a uh, 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 chapter. Every, all the worlds in it are supposed to be a little creepy feeling. Um, you start with Glove World, which has been long since shut down after the uh, episode Glove World R.I.P. Uh, then we move on to the Salty Spittoon, which is a challenge level. Then to Rooftop Rumble from Creature from the Krusty Krab. Then to the Ink Caves, which is an original level. And then to Flying Dutchman's Graveyard, from which is a combination of the one from BFBB and Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Uh, this also acts as a boss level, where you fight the Inked Dutch Cluster, which uh, the Inked have taken a bunch of pieces from uh, BFBB's uh, Flying Dutchman's Graveyard, and ha have used them to build a mech of sorts. Uh, I will show off in the corner here uh, a concept of it, if you'd like to see. Then the third chapter, and the last one I will touch on, is called Noisy Neighbors. This is where Squidward is introduced into the book. Uh, it's centered around him. He's sort of the main character of this chapter. Uh, the first level is Squidward's Tiki Island, which is an original level, uh, which has... Uh, the, the soundtrack for it will be entirely a cappella. Then we've got Cephalopod Lodge, which is a challenge level. Then we have Clarinet Land, which is an original level. Tentacle Acres, which is an original level. And then the Bubble Bowl, which is an original level where you fight Ink Squidward.
All right, and I'm here interviewing the uh, head uh, project leader of Bikini Bottom Tales, No Life. How are you doing today, No Life? Uh, really stressed out. Uh, it's all right. I'm pretty sure this came as last minute. Anyways, just a few questions for you to start off. So for the people who haven't heard of this or are finding out of the project for the first time, what is Bikini Bottom Tales and what inspired you to start making? Well, there is a whole section to this uh, direct based uh, that, that that's just me explaining the game. But I'll give like a brief summary. Um, the game acts as a sort of sequel to BFPB. Uh, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie game, Creature from the Krusty Krab, and a few more games. It incorporates elements from all of them, but it is, at its core, a new game. It's different from the rest of them, and you'll know that when you play it. Uh, the demo that will be shown today will probably look most similar to BFBB, but... Trust me when I say that when the game is ready for, for consumption, it's going to be a completely different experience. It's not going to feel like BFBB, really. I mean, movement will, because the movement is inspired by BFBB, because I think the controls in that game are really well done. But the way that attacking is handled, the way that enemies work kind of similar to BFBB, too, but... uh. They're not all taken from BFBB. There's brand new enemies, and enemies from other games will make appearances. Uh, the story is SpongeBob and Patrick find themselves sucked into a book that recalls every every moment of their lives. Uh, they have to go from each chapter of the book fighting the Inked, which are a new enemy type that takes pieces of other enemies and pulls them together to make new combinations. As they go through, they realize that somebody is writing in the book and, and changing their past. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> All right. So for the people, so for the people who are probably wondering, uh, the game basically, as he explained, is just a general census. Uh, Patrick, SpongeBob and possibly a few other characters just uh, running around and trying to figure out what in the ever-loving God is going on in this book. Uh, there will always be two characters active at all times. So instead of going to bus stops to switch, it'll be you and there will be an AI following you. Kind of like Lego Star Wars and like how you switch between characters like that so you could play through the whole game as just patrick if you wanted to um the the characters that are confirmed currently are spongebob patrick and squidward but i'm not saying that's all there's going to be and i'm not saying necessarily saying that there's going to be more either all right then so another question are there any other characters besides the playable characters that'll make uh, guest appearances, like Mr. Krabs, yes. uh, Lenny, and other characters? Um, Mr. Krabs... Uh, well, most of the characters that make appearances are inside the books themselves. So they're not... They weren't sucked in. They're past versions of themselves that were, were from the past, right? So, like, Squidward's at the beginning of Jellyfish Fields in BFPB. And he's also there in BBT. Uh, the layout is different. I mean, kind of. The level he shows up in looks very similar to uh, JF01, but it's much bigger. And Squidward's still there, but he says different lines, whatever. Uh, that's before he gets sucked into the book himself. Uh, you also you have Mr. Krabs, Sandy, uh, Plankton... And I think uh, that's about it for for main characters that, that make appearances like that. They do play roles in the story. So, so like, Plankton ends up realizing that he's in this book and that... And he, he spends, like, the whole time trying to take control of the situation and 
but it's like funny because he is just like a small piece of the puzzle and he keeps trying he keeps like he himself being the narcissist he is thinks that he's in control the whole time it's kind of funny so what you're saying from that is that characters who are in the book can basically become somewhat self-aware yes. and realize they're in the book and then try and like assist you in ways yes that's very interesting. Now, for how long have has this game been in development now for? Uh, that depends. So, back when Rehydrated was first announced was when HDR was canceled. But if you want to so if you want to talk about when when the the idea was first conceived, we originally planned for there to be DLC to HDR, free DLC. One mm. was called The Spongiverse. And it, it had Spongebob getting sucked through a portal, or Spongebob and Patrick getting sucked through a portal and uh, visiting other games' levels. And that's kind of where it started. And then when Rehydrated was announced, we, we decided we were going to take that idea and stretch it out into a full game. So a lot of what we did at first was just planning. We weren't even like working on the game. Uh, like from a development standpoint, we were planning out each chapter, uh, the mechanics, how everything was going to work. Then when we started working, we uh, we built off of HDR at first. And we got to a point where we had a demo finished, but we couldn't release the demo because Unity decided to, to pull their multiplayer API. And it, it messed with the all the scripts in the game and we couldn't build the, the the product anymore so we had to pretty much make a new project and start all over again all right and for the people who may be wondering will older levels from uh other, from the older spongebob games like uh creature from the crusty crab uh truth or square and um uh battle for bikini bottom make appearances in some way shape or form so BBT's deal is we take worlds but with new level design so when you play through like uh, I'm trying to think about what I can say without spoiling because later in this event we're going to go through or at some point in the event we're going to go through every single chapter that's uh, currently planned out and all of its levels we're going to talk about them they okay so the levels don't make appearances but the worlds do so you go to jellyfish fields and you go to like flying dutchman's graveyard but they're not the, the same level so the locations do make appearances yes and it's with the same design. designs but with so different the locations layouts with their, so the locations with their like same aesthetics will appear just with alterations and different level design Yes, and sometimes you will come across an area that looks the same, but then it opens up into a larger level. Like, um, JF01 from Battle for Bikini Bottom makes an appearance uh, as the beginning of the level Jellyfish Flashback. So you, it, it starts and it looks the same as, as BFBB to a certain degree, right? And you play through, and then once you get to the end, it opens up into this huge level to give you a, a sense of scale for how large our levels are compared to levels from BFBB. All right, so that makes sense. Uh, will there be any cut levels or levels from the show that will make appearances in the game, such as uh, like Glove World or Glove Universe? I forget what it's referred to as now. Yes. Uh, and other locales like that. Uh, yes. Each chapter will have a certain theme. They won't be based after a certain game anymore. Uh, we originally had it planned where chapter 1 would be BFBB. Chapter 2 would be original worlds uh, in the style of BFBB. Then chapter 3 would be uh, the Spongebob movie game. Then chapter 4 would be original levels in the style of the Spongebob movie game, etc. But we ended up scrapping that because it didn't work with the flow and more difficult levels that we wanted. So like... Uh, having the dream bubble be the third level of the game just didn't work because it is a very difficult section so we couldn't do that so we ended up making a, a new layout that is more more each one has a theme based on the story that's going on 
and there's a lot of original levels. For example, you've got like Krusty Towers, you have Squidward's uh, Tiki Land. Uh, there's more. Uh, that at the at the part where I go through each chapter and talk about the the levels within, you'll you'll notice. All right. Will there uh will there be uh will there be different difficulties uh in the game? Um, for people who want a, more of a challenge, or will it be set to one difficulty throughout the entire playthrough? I think it'll be one difficulty, but I would, there will probably be, if anything, like an assist mode that makes it slightly easier, but it's not like we're going to change the locations of things. The difficulty of BBT, since it is a longer game, will progress as it goes. So it gets harder and harder as you go along through each chapter. And since we know that most of our fans are a bit older, and most of them come from, from the old games, which were released a while ago, that we, we know we can make it a bit harder, because we know that people aren't children anymore. Yeah, so it's not going to be, like, insanely hard, but some of, like, the harder... Uh, so, BFBB isn't an insanely difficult game. It's not extremely easy, either, but it's not, like, really difficult. But we do so plan... Go we ahead. we do plan for there to be sections of BBT that are difficult. All right. Uh, next question, if you're done answering that, would be: Will there be any returning moves or new moves in this game? Um. Okay. So the the way that the combat works is it's it's all combo based. So your your main you have three main attacks, and they're they're very, really similar to BFBB. You you have your spin, your launch, and and your smash. So one that goes around, one that goes up, and one that goes down, just like BFBB. But you can mix them together. So if you do like a spin followed by a launch, you'll get like a spinning launch. Or if you do like uh, a smash followed by a uh, or a launch followed by a smash, you'll get like a harder hitting smash with a larger shock wave. So you only really have to remember the main three moves, but you can mix them together to get different effects. So it's simple, but allows for complexity. You'll never really have to use the other ones, but they can be useful in certain situations. Plus, there's an upgrade system. So if you want... Uh, let's say you want to be able to knock enemies away from you so then you can have a little more breathing room or so you can get out of a, a, a tricky situation get more ink to fill up your shield you can upgrade your your smash attack to have a larger shockwave and instead of doing damage to rather have a lot of knockback so then you can smash down which will knock back all the enemies giving you time to get your shield up before you fight them again. Mm, all right, that makes sense. So basically, it's gonna function somewhat similar to the SpongeBob movie game. To a certain degree, yeah, it's very customizable. Like so if you like a specific thing, you can buff the hell out of it and leave something that you don't like off. So let's say you don't want your your smash to do any knockback, you find it useless, you don't have to put any upgrade points into that. You can put them all into just straight, pure damage. But it'll be a small, confined area, so you'd have to hit in the right spot. Mm, so basically less range, but more uh, damage. If that's what you would like. The game is very customizable with your play style. And I can tell that once people start speedrunning, they're going to find the perfect combo for speed. <laughs> mm. They're gonna try and find a way to, cru to cruise boost their way through the game somehow. <laughs> People are definitely gonna find the perfect combo. I know it's gonna happen. Uh, with with a system like that, it's almost impossible to have perfect balancing. But it's also a really good feature to allow to please larger parties. I know that somebody's eventually gonna find out like. A bunch of like a certain uh, like uh, a certain combo of 
upgrades is, like, unstoppable. I mean, it's almost impossible to avoid. Good point. One other question. Uh, will there be any other mo game modes besides uh, just the story mode? Okay. Yes. So, how we do this at Slice, since we are releasing three different games... There are three different games being worked on by three separate subsets. And they all share somewhat similar graphical styles. And they're all based on Spongebob. So what we decided to do was have the multiplayer components of games in their own separate game. So, for example, instead of having all three games have all separate multiplayer modes that we have to program, program in for all of them, we instead have... All three games have their main story and maybe like one side mode. And then we have uh, Bikini Bottom Bash, which is another game that has like multiplayer mini games of sorts. Um, BBT will specifically have the story mode, which is multiplayer, right? Uh, so we can't really put that into, an, into a different game because it is the same game. It's It's got co-op though. Um, you, you also have, uh, the, uh, the wave mode. It's kind of like, think Call of Duty Zombies, but Spongebob, and, and each, uh, like, each separate map that you play on is based on a different type of movie. Uh, for example, the first one, the one that comes out with Chapter 1, is is a noir-based map. So it's all in black and white, and it's all mystery-based, and it's really cool. <laughs> so basically, all every single map that comes out will have its own uh, special theme to it. Yes. Uh, and so... there, I guess, and I don't want, like, comparing to, BF, uh, to BFBBR, but it's nothing like the multiplayer <laughs> in that game. I mean, it is technically, like, a horde mode of sorts, but it's not... It plays very different. But, yeah, and it uh, it has the same controls as the as the main campaign. So unlike in BFBBR, where the camera's up in the air, you see both players on the same camera, uh, all players have a separate camera, and it controls exactly the same as the main game. So basically, it'll be a... Uh, like a solo... Mo it'll be kind of like a online uh, multiplayer type aspect where uh, you and like a few of your friends can cooperate each on their own computer or device uh, and run around and help each other defeat enemies. Yes, pretty much. Will the upgrades also be available in horde mode or will you start with a certain... Uh, will you start with certain stats every time? Um... So the way that the upgrades work in in and it's not called horde mode. It's uh called director's oh, cut. Um, oh, all right then. Yeah, it, the the mode is called director's cut, and basically the the story of that is, um, it's SpongeBob and Patrick and Squidward, and mystery character, uh, telling the story of of BBT, but in super exaggerated movie like ways. So basically, it's basically like a plot story. The game's already been over. They're like, they've made friends with this mysterious man, and they're telling other people the story, except in extremely exaggerated ways. Sort of, but the, the mysterious character is... I just said that because it's another playable character in the actual oh. campaign that I haven't announced yet. <laughs> There's four oh, players. Right so it's, it's a mystery four game. All right, so mystery character and the rest of the so mystery character and the rest of the crew are basically describing the events of what's been happening in the actual game story mode. Yes. Except to exaggerated effect, except to exaggerated feats. Yeah, uh, and known as SpongeBob. Yeah, and each map is based on a different type of movie. So imagine uh, SpongeBob and Patrick directed a BBT movie. They're very clearly going to make it super exaggerated, so that's what they do. Uh, so, uh, another question about the game is... The assets are all created from scratch, correct? Yes, there's not a single asset in the game that has been ripped from anywhere. Even the sounds, 
completely made from scratch. Mm, all right, then. How long did it take you to make each individual asset? Well, it depends on the asset. And um, I give everybody a lot of time. And one of our main things with our team is we like to give everybody almost 100% creative freedom, to a certain degree. Um, I still like to try and keep things consistent, but since our team all knows what we're trying to go for, that's not usually a problem. Uh, but one of my main sayings that I go by is you should be able to look at an asset and be like, somebody spent three hours making that just for this game. I like to to have tons of detail, not like, like uh, when I say detail, I don't mean super high quality textures, tons of effects, thousands, uh, like, like millions of polygons, like that's not what I mean by detail. I mean, some of our, our assets are really high quality, but by detail, I mean you can look at it and see like this here was done this way. You can, like, each model almost tells a story on its own. And every single aspect of a model has some sort of play to it. For example, the hammer's body is an industrial park barrel. That's what it is. And you can tell if you look at it at long enough and you really pay attention. It's how a lot of things are. It, everything is usually structured in a way that makes sense. Yeah, that would make sense. So, what are your opinion on, not your opinions per se, but how does it feel working with other members uh, on this? How is development typically, like, do you guys sometimes get into, like, small arguments over nitpicky things? Or are you generally, does ever, generally everything go smoothly? Uh, sometimes things go smoothly. Like, I have dominant say, which makes sense, because I am sort of the leader. But... There are arguments between the smaller members more often. And um, as from the live stream from last week, we met some of the voice actors, of which I am one. How has it been working with uh, other people for recording lines? I'm pretty sure you haven't started recording any lines yet, except for the few main characters, because uh, I'm pretty sure the uh, you have to have them prioritized first. Yes. What has it been? What has it been working with, uh, with uh, these, uh, with these VAs? It's been wonderful. I mean, the main cast. So, the reason that I have it set up the way I do is because of activity. I mean, we could have Uncle Al come along and be like, "I want to voice Mr. Krabs and Squidward," and I might honestly have to turn it down, because the one positive to the voice actors we have is they're very, very active members of the community. I can get a hold of them and get a response very quickly, and I can get my lines done really fast. Since the main developer of the game is one of the voice actors, I voice Patrick, it is so easy for me to be like, I need a Patrick line. Open up Audacity and record one. I, it's a super easy thing. Uh, we had to make a little bit of a stretch for the most part though, like uh, Sandy and Plankton, our voice actors for them aren't active all the time. I mean, I can't blame them, but it, it does make things a little more difficult and a little more uh, scary because sometimes I'm like, what if we need voice lines done before a certain time? What if we can't get them done? That scares me. And that's one of the reasons why it's so good to have voice actors that are so close to the community you're a part of. Uh, I'm some of my closest friends are the voice actors of the game like me Mason Jesse and and you I consider you you guys friends of mine and as friends I know that you guys understand the game understand where what I would like from it and you guys put in your all because I mean I know none of you guys want to let me down and that definitely helps well um yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, that left me kind of speechless. Why? <laughs> because just speechless. I am very easily flattered. I'll just say that. <laughs> um. Uh, anyways, uh, moving on. 
uh, if for any people who may or may not be wondering, will there be other opportunities for them to like audition for other characters that you may not have voices for yet? Yes. Uh, if we don't already have somebody picked out, you can audition. So we don't necessarily we don't necessarily have a role for like Mrs. Puff specifically planned out for the game. But if a voice actor came along that was really good at the impression, we'd totally be able to squeeze her in. And that's that's a thing. If you have a good impression of a character, don't be afraid to come along. Actually, if you have any skills in any part of game development, really, don't be afraid to get a hold of me. I mean, right now our open positions are um, sound effects, animators, both 2D and 3D, so if you are skilled in any of those areas, or even any of the other areas I didn't mention, go ahead and get a hold of me. We might have an opening. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure right now you guys are also looking for members to help uh, move along the development due to the fact that uh, you, right now you're trying to get a, a working playable demo to show off for this. So after this stream, I'm going to be setting up the programmers with the game. So everything that's done right now was done by me, myself, and that's just because I wanted to get the foundation of the game done before I let other people work on it. Because I've worked on other games, and I find if you have like four people working on the, four, the foundation, even just the little inconsistencies can get really confusing. If you want to make a robot, it takes like ten minutes, maybe sometimes even less. And the thing about that is if I had let everybody work on the foundation, I couldn't have assured that. So the, the, the less experienced programmers would have more of a struggle with certain features. But since I set everything up to be like really easy to use, now people with any experience levels can do really whatever they want with the game. I plan to take a break after this stream because I've been on like constant crunch for the past few months. So... I'm having everything set up in a way to where every single person will be able to continue to work. And right now, second in charge of Slice as a whole, not just BBT, Hero, is is going to be put in charge of the game while I take a few weeks to just cool down and uh, spend some time with my friends and family. Of course. Remember, whenever you start feeling stressed out, always, always take the time to refresh yourself take a few days off take a few weeks off take a month off depends just just take back and relax never stress yourself out to the point that you say you know what I'm, I'm tired of this i no longer want to deal with this i'm done because you may end up regretting it uh any, any more questions oh, uh yes uh one final question really what are some of the hardships you've had? what are some of the issues that have arise while developing this like uh a certain coding that's uh like prevented you from uh, moving on certain issues with like ai and stuff like that the first one was bfbb hd getting to the point where i couldn't add anything without changing several scripts and the second block was in hdr when unity pulled their multiplayer api and it caused us to pretty much have to scrap the project but wow. most of the most of the the limitations we've had or most of the, the the things that have held held me back personally have been personal issues things with family things with my mental health things with harassment online yeah that would make sense because i remember in the earlier days you got a bit of harassment and i think you still get some to this day if i uh, if i remember correctly pretty much it comes with the it comes with being popular, shall we say? Yeah, I think that we should close off the interview though, so I can start editing it. Yeah, all right then. That's fine then. Anyways, it was nice. Thank you. All right then. You take care then. You too. Goodbye. All right then. Bye. Before we go, we have one more announcement to make. Bikini Bottom Bash is a brand new Spongebob game based on the classic party games from the GameCube era and uh, even some from the N64 era. 
You have stuff like racing games, where you uh, race down slides. You have Spongebob races. Uh, battle modes that take place on, on uh, large tilting platforms. And many fun and exciting game modes for you all to enjoy. The game is entirely multiplayer, and I can't wait to play it with you. Thank you for following us on our journey. We hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, this is the end of the pre-recorded section, so please donate to Rehydrated Relief and continue to onto my channel to watch the live section where I will be working on the game and taking input to make adjustments. Once that is all wrapped up, I heavily recommend you to continue watching the relief and enjoy everybody else's content. I know I will be. Thank you, and have fun with the live segment.